We're here on the mighty Hughes Creek, just out the back of Avenal. Hughes Creek, funny enough, that move. No, the mighty, the mighty Hughes Creek. I don't see a... A little bit dry and tight oh, at the moment, I don't, see, I don't see a Taylor Creek anywhere, but that's another story. <laughs> um, so... We had, we had you on a show a couple of years ago. We fished Eildon. That's part of your authority uh, too. Yep. But what we're here, we're virtually up in the Strathbogie Range, the upper reaches of the Hughes Creek, uh, just to see the sort of work that you do up here. That's right, Merv, that's right. And the, the Hughes Creek's really important to us. Um, it's got one of our only remaining Macquarie perch populations in the area. There's not many left. And this creek, along with the Sevens Creek, suffered a lot. Um, since we came in, we cleared the land, we had rabbits come in, etc. We've had a lot of erosion off, off these hills and a lot of sand in up in our streams, filling up the pools and causing a whole heap of issues for our, our mackers. Now, Merv, this is Joe from the Arthur Riley Institute. Joe, how are you? Good, how are you? Arthur Riley Institute for Environmental Research. What are you guys doing down here? Well, we're um, monitoring the health of Macquarie perch. It's an um, Australian native freshwater fish which is um, nationally endangered. And so we're, the boys are out here doing some surveys to um, check on the health of the, the population here. Uh, so what are we doing? Just electroing the water, stun the fish, bring it up, have a look, uh, numbers, health-wise. A um, yep. little bit of a drought at the moment. Yep. Um, and does that create problems for you up here too? It does. So the, where we're working Hughes Creek here, it's an unregulated tributary of the Goulburn River. So um, at the moment with drought conditions, it's, um, yeah, water's been pretty low. Um, and so that, that's a bit of an issue for Macquarie Perch. There's um, about 11 populations in Victoria and um, seven populations are within the, this region, the Golden Broken Catchment. So what we're going to do is we'll go and catch up with these guys and, and see if they've electrode any fish up. Well, Merv Hughes Fishing Research, guys. We've got Hugh and Graham back here. And what they've done, they've got a bucket full of fish, as you can see, looking into it. What they do now is they measure the fish. Uh, sometimes they tag it, but this trip, they're just measuring, recording what they've got, then releasing. We're here with the guys from the research lab that are catching them, recording them. And then what we do is release them. And I have the pleasure of releasing this fella. So a beautiful little Macquarie perch. Beautiful fish. They are, aren't they? Into Hughes Creek. Into Hughes Creek.
collect those fish and we're trying now to move away from farm dams and put them into off-stream habitats such as McClarty's Lagoon in the Golden Broken catchment um, and over the next five years we'll come back and keep replenishing that population and we'll keep monitoring just to ensure that they're doing well. So we're achieving goals as far as translocating them back into the wild. Where they move from here, particularly in large systems that are connected to rivers, um, tells us that they're dispersing potentially downstream because of the high flows over the last few years. So we kind of wouldn't expect to pick them up in the early stages, but I think if we keep going for another five or six years and we keep these conservation translocations up that we'll start to pick them up in the future. Well, they're endangered for a reason. Well, that's a threatened species. So the populations are highly fragmented. Abundances are really low. We've got a lot of um, river regulation going on. So that impacts them. We've got carp, we've got redfin. So that muddies the water up and they, uh, the redfin actively hunt for um, small bodied native fish. So that's knocked them around a little bit. Um, but they, look, they just play a really important role in the ecosystem and it's just a shame to see such a beautiful little fish, you know, struggling. To bring country and land back to an original place, it's not just about the big things, it's about the little things in between that make up the bigger things because it's all connected. Monitoring the um, oxygen levels in the pools over the last few weeks and they're getting pretty low, but anyway, they've hung in there till now. they're in distinct genetic groups and so we want to put them or translocate them into populations that are most similar to the ones that are in Holland's Creek. In any species of fish, especially native fish, we're really concerned about if they're put in dire straits due to water levels. There are species that used to be fairly prolific a years ago but the numbers have, have dramatically declined as has the water quality and, and the in-stream environment. It's really, really important because there's only 10 or 11 populations of Macquarie perch left in Victoria and we don't obviously want to lose one of those populations. Macquarie perch are a very threatened species. There's, there's not many of them left around. There's about 11 small populations left total and about seven of those within our or the golden broken catchment. Once they're gone, they're gone. We can never get them back again. By rescuing these fish now and putting them, and they're actually going to go back into this system, they're going to be into the Broken River, which is really good, and we're really pleased about that. That will ensure that if fish are needed later on to, to breed and restock this stream, we'll have something to work with.
trying to build some habitat pools, mainly for native fish habitat in terms of the Murray Cod and the Golden Perch. So. The main concept around it is removing sediment, um, digging some deeper pools for the fish and placing some snags in them pools. The Numerica and the Thaya Angling Club uh, wrote letter, letters of recommendation for this project to occur. So um, they've both been out on site, had a bit of a look, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what they can catch in summer. So this area traditionally was de-snagged back in the 60s um, through a lot of misinformation where they thought it was creating flooding and stuff like that. So they de-snagged the rivers. So they pulled all the timber out, put it up on the bank and burn it. So now we're putting it back in. Plus it's a sort of harbour for them, you know, so if there's predatory birds around, they don't get picked off the young ones. So they've got somewhere to hide when they're young. snagging because we've lost so many native fish over the years for the habitat put back into the waterways and for our native fish it's just such a big benefit for the Tunnerong people. 